Hello, my name is David Travis and this is the UX Tea Break. In this episode, I look at alternatives to field research. So this question comes from Jennifer Adam and Jennifer said, I, in my company, there's really budget and time to do field visits, especially if they were just done the year prior with the same audience. How do you recommend understanding users' needs, goals, and motivations without costly field research for each project? I thought this was an interesting question because I think a lot of us are in this position at the moment, even if our companies uh, will pay for field research one of the problems is if you're in lockdown, so basically if you live on planet Earth, it's very difficult for you to go out and visit users at the moment. So what could we do instead? Well, first of all, I should begin by saying that field research going into your user's context is the gold standard. That's really what you should be aiming for. And that's because context is like a skeleton key for unlocking user needs. When you go into the user's context, you discover things that are very difficult to find out any other way. Having said that, if we're in a situation as we are now, where it's difficult to do field research, what can you do instead? So there are three ideas I thought I would try uh, with you that I think all of each of them add value. So first up, you could carry out a diary study. So with the diary study, what you do is you ask users to literally keep a diary for you a diary describing how they go about embarking on the meaningful activity that you're interested in investigating. Now, you can give them a paper diary to complete, but obviously there are digital tools you can use instead. So for example, there is one digital tool called DScout, which will run all of the sessions for you, but you don't need to pay a subscription service to do kind of diary studies. There are also apps on the App Store that you can ask your participants to download. For example, Day One would be an example of that. I think Memento is another one. And both of those apps allow users to enter text, to take photographs of their context, to make recordings as well. And they can create kind of rich descriptions of, of the way they go about the meaningful activity that you're interested in investigating. So a diary study is one. Another alternative is to carry out interviews. Now, interviews can be problematic. And the reason they're problematic is we're often asking users with an interview to remember things that went on in the past. And asking people to remember things that went on in the past aren't as good as asking people to describe what they're doing at the moment and observing their behaviour. But there are two ways around that, two different ways of running interviews that might help in that situation. The first is a jobs to be done style interview. So jobs to be done was a method invented by Clayton Christensen as a technique for understanding consumer purchases. But it's easy for us to adapt in order to understand the way people go about living their lives and doing meaningful activities. So the way it basically works is you run a cognitive interview. A cognitive interview tries to put people back in the moment when they were doing the behavior. So, for example, you'll say to people things that at first glance may not seem relevant, such as what time of day was it? Um, whereabouts were you? Who were you with? What were you wearing? Those kind of questions, although they're not relevant to understanding the activity itself, they do help you put people back in the moment when they were doing the thing that you're interested in un and understanding. Once you've got them back in that moment with the jobs to be done interview, what you do is you step back in the process. What happened before that? What happened earlier than that? And you can also step forward in the process as well. So the idea is it's a very structured way of helping them recall certain experience, experiences that they've had. Now, there's another technique that's related to that as well, and it's called user experience mapping. Uh, this was invented by some people at GDS, Government Digital Services in the UK. And with that particular technique, you ask people to do a similar kind of thing as with a jobs to be done interview. But now what they're doing is they're writing each of those steps on individual cards for you. Now, this is a great technique if you're interested in understanding an experience that happens rarely or one that's very difficult for you to observe live. So, for example, Let's say you're interested in the experience of a motorist breaking down um, in their car. 
that's something that will be difficult for you to observe live. You can't really recruit people who are about to break down, but it is an experience you might be interested in and you can use this technique for doing it. It's similar to jobs to be done in that in this instance, you ask people to describe the whole experience to you from beginning to end, and then you pick somewhere in that process. It doesn't necessarily need to be the beginning, but somewhere in that process, you pick a point and you ask somebody to describe what happened. Um, wh what was the experience like? Was it positive or negative? Or what was that step like? And then you ask them to go forward and backwards in the process as well. What's important though with this technique is you're getting users to actually write down their experience, which means you're capturing their words and their phrases. And that gets you a little bit closer to understanding what the experience was like from their perspective without you over-interpreting what went on. So those three techniques, a diary study, a jobs to be done interview, user experience mapping, are all methods that you can use which are much cheaper than going out and doing a field visit. I want to emphasize again, the gold standard is to get into your user's context. That's where you really discover things. But if at the moment you're like most of us and you can't do that, you might find those techniques useful. Well, I hope you found that useful, uh, Jennifer. Um, if you found it useful, please put a comment below. And if you have any questions you'd like me to answer in future Tea Break videos, please post those below as well. <music>